Hi, this is Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org, here with SiliconANGLE TV's live continuous coverage from HP Discover in Las Vegas. Joining me for this segment, we're going to talk about cloud. I've got Alex Williams from Services Angle and Ben Keeps, who's with himself. So, hey uh, Ben. Ben's a me, cloud me analyst. It's uh, first time on theCUBE. Uh, thanks for joining us, Ben. No problem, thanks for inviting me. Absolutely, so uh, what we try to do on theCUBE is we, we find the smartest people we can find uh, and, uh, and we bring and them on. Failing that, you get Alex and I. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so no, Alex is smart. <laughs> And you said we've never fought before. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time for people. All right, guys, you know, save, save, save it for later. So, you know, we, we, we've known each other on Twitter for quite a while. We said, uh, talking about the early days of kind of cloud and social media actually intersected pretty well. So, you know, the Clouderati discussions where you get, you know, the 75 people that are really kind of driving some of that discussion out there. Uh, and today, social media and cloud, you know, are a little bit more uh, more real <laughs> in, in many ways. So, um, Ben, you've been telling me you've you've been watching a lot of the news. You're doing a ton of traveling. Uh, we appreciate you coming all the way from New Zealand here to be on the cube. Okay. So, tell me wh what you've been up to lately, and what are you seeing in the cloud world? I mean, it's interesting. You know, what you were talking about about the old days when there were only sort of 50 of us on Twitter and, and we could have a conversation. You know, the thing that always surprises me, and I was, I, was, I was talking to Alex about it the other day, is that, you know, the whole world is talking about cloud. Every company, whether it's cloud or cloud washing, is, is talking about, about cloud. And yet, there's actually not that many people who kind of really know what it is or who are kind of are ind independently talking about it. And it's, um, it's always, it always really it confuses me that, that that's the case. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know why, I guess everyone's tied up with, with, with a vendor thing, I guess. But, um, you know, I'm really, for, for me, Cloud's all about actually enabling business to do, or organizations generally, to do to do stuff better more in, in a more agile way. And so I'm really passionate about about just education, just making sure that people know what cloud is. And beyond beyond the technical stuff, for me it's the business stuff that's exciting. Okay, yeah, no, I love the education angle. I want to dig into that a little bit more. But recent news, what, what have you been seeing? What have you seen at Discover? Uh, you know, Microsoft, Oracle, there's, there's been a ton of new news lately, so can you help? Yeah, so it's been, it's been a massive, massive week for um, for, for cloud news. Um, probably the biggest news was that Larry Ellison got on Twitter, uh, and he sent he sent out one tweet yesterday. And um, he was and he was it was the most ungrammatically correct sentence I have read from a chief executive in all my all my he, he didn't follow the rule, which is like trying out Twitter, not sure about Twitter. I, that, I guess that was that was a year. I know. He he just what, what, did, what did Larry send? Um, I'll look it up, but okay. it's basically he says. Um, um, something about SAP I'm not being in the cloud. Yeah, but he, he cracked on SAP. Oh, so it was cloud related, the tweet? It was, yeah. Okay. yeah. No, that, 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 that's, that's cool, so. I mean, it's been an amazing week. I mean, we've, it's been a long time since we've had a, a so, week so, with so, so much news. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, Microsoft ha uh, has an event today where they're announcing a bunch of stuff and really, um, you know, it really is a, a bit of a revolution in that, in that they're not um, so, laser focused on .NET, they're really opening up and seeing that other languages and frameworks um, have a place within within the Azure story. Um, Oracle uh, announcing a, a bunch of stuff which, to be honest, doesn't feel like it actually exists or it's actually anything new, but it's just, they have to be seen to be jumping on the cloud bandwagon. I don't know what you think, Alex, I think you kind of feel similarly. Yeah, definitely, I, I watched it. I watched Larry Ellison yesterday. Well, just, be, just before we get started, Larry's first tweet was, Oracle's got 100 plus enterprise applications live in the cloud today. SAP's got nothing but success, success factors until 2020. So, so classic Larry, just <laughs> punching at the competition well, punching, really but hard. It, but, it's, but it's actually a lie, and, and, and I'm not an SAP supporter, you know. But, but the truth is that SAP has by design, which has customers using it mm -hmm. in production. SAP has has a suite of you know higher level cloud applications. So it's it's. And they've got and they, and they've got Sapphire and they, a couple yeah, weeks ago. And they've got so. and they've got Samir Patel. Yeah. And you know, and Samir is, is is one of us. He's a blogger, he knows social, he's been hired as one of, as a senior VP over there. He's re, he's reporting directly to Lars and Success Factors. The cloud strategy for SAP though is a question mark because they they're trying to combine what well, Lars just says, we just we'll build it, you know, it's not a big deal. But there is some there's some infrastructure issues that they have, different architectures, for yeah. instance, that they're trying to. I think they're going to have to try to. They're going to have to work out. But Larry's. I mean, my my point about Larry was that you know he says we've been building this cloud for seven years. I said, well, if you've been building this thing for seven years, I mean, I mean, it looks like it was 
you know, something out of, it looks like it was something se built so, seven so, years so ago. So it's I, I got a chance to tour the Super NAF uh, at the beginning of the week, and so, you know, I we feel, I, I've seen the cloud, right? You know, cloud security is guys with guns, and, and clouds <laughs> are real, they're in their, their little <laughs> racks, and I mean, HP had big footprint there, Nervonix is there, EMC's there, Dell's there, big presence. Big data in the cloud is real, so, you know, 40 Teradata. petabyte. You know, I think was it the Teradata that's 40 petabytes? I mean, it was it's just massive, massive databases there. eBay um, has so like a 50,000 cluster. No, 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 no. So you know, I, I almost felt it like cloud. It made it even more real for me. Than, uh, and I've been watching this trend for for a long time. Sure. So yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. And and I, and I think um, you know we're rapidly getting to a point. I remember Cloud Connect. You know, a couple of years ago when um, one of the you know one of the big vendors with with a three letter name, three letter acronym name was on stage, you know, doing some serious cloud washing. And I think we're rapidly getting to the point where, you know, okay, Larry was cloud washing yesterday, but really it, it's too late for cloud washing. People are smarter than that. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to welcoming the day when vendors just can't get away with it anymore, because it just sucks, it really does. I think where we are, where, in my view, where we are right now is where the whole discussion about cloud and cloud infrastructure really is one about like IT and data consolidation. It's not about it. It's it's less about you know new opportunities. The real the opportunities come in with the data, and that that seems to me where we are right now. We're kind of in this first phase where we're going to become much more innovative around data, and 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 the the companies that we know and you know and love are doing this all the time. Like you know, Flightcaster, for instance, is a great example of a company that really sure. embraces data, and the platform as a service providers. They understand data and they leverage and they leverage infrastructures that they can rely on, like Amazon Web Services, so Heroku, for instance, and sure. Engine Yard. And so, that to me is where we're coming. It's like, we're now, we're now at a point where, it's almost like we're, we're seeing this aggregation now start to happen. I mean, HP used the term data lake when they talked about people, about companies aggregating data. And our, you know, our CTO, Dave Lawyer, talks a lot about the power of data, like in data by itself has a power of one, data combined, data aggregated, shared, then, then brought back to you has a multiple, multiple data sure. um, yeah. potential. So, so, so that's, where, that's where the innovation, that's where the real growth will come. Will, yeah, will absolutely, I mean, we see real value creation in some of the you know, big data, another you know, kind of hype term, but you know, the data inf information, new value streams, new revenue models. Um, Dave Vellante's uh, you know, said often, you know, Big data actually gives the cloud something to do. Sure. So, yeah. you know, Ben, what, what, what's your well, take on the data yeah, stuff? Yeah, that's absolutely right, I totally agree. So we, I was um, talking with, with, with a guy here at HP who's a vice president of their, of their transportation, travel and transportation division. And we were talking about how airlines, you know, need to, you know, things are hard for airlines, they're, they're, they're not making a lot of money, they need to find more ways to add value and derive some revenue out of customers. Right. How do you do that? You do that by making an experience that's really contextual, really personalized to the customer. Well, how do you do that? You do that by aggregating, accumulating all of this data around customers and deriving some insights from it. And so Autonomy, which is, you know, HP bought for $10 million or something last year, is doing some unbelievable things with just taking huge, vast quantities of unstructured data and, and deriving some insights from that and feeding that back into, into, into line of business tools. And, and, and that's incredible. Yeah. yeah, that's just amazing. And and if that's only going to you know once once the Internet of Things comes in and we've got every device in the world is, is IP enabled. When you know when my refrigerator and my, my microwave oven and and whatever is IP enabled, the amount of data that's going to exist and and deriving some insight from that data is a massive challenge. But in terms of opportunity, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, it is unbelievable. It is, it is unbelievable. It's unbelievable to fathom and. But I also believe that announcements this week, for instance, the implication, for instance, about Microsoft and HP working together, and what, what are the implications of that? And I, I think that's an important step for, for, uh, for HP. Uh, you know, last year was a disaster with the WebOS, and this year they're starting to, to show that they are going to have some foundation for their mobile strategy. And, 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 and Windows, Windows 8 makes sense on one level in terms of it provides a synchronization between you know, Windows 8 phone, Windows 8 tablet, and even the Windows 8 t TV environment. Well, it's similar to what HP was planning to do with WebOS. It's right. Some of that yeah. synchronization yeah. Yeah. between multiple and, devices. And you know, and the Apple platform is is is, is fragmented. I mean, it's sure. getting better. I mean, and Google is just as you know, it, and Android is splintered all over the place. 
and Android and Chrome don't have any yeah. real alignment and either. Chrome OS. So HP has this opportunity, and they, and they really have to have a mobile. They really have to have mobile devices. So, so HP, you're saying? I mean, HP really has to have um, those mobile devices mm -hmm. because that provides them the you know kind of an angle into the enterprise. It provides them an angle into developing an app ecosystem. Sure. It also provides them an angle to then be able to use a lot of the technologies that Microsoft has been developing, particularly around geodata. The only thing is, I mean, I agree with you, the only, the only difficulty I see is that, you know, for HP, like, with, like the other traditional legacy vendors, you know, whether it's I, IBM or, or SAP or Microsoft or Oracle, you know, they've got, you know, HP has 270,000 staff and they're used to, they're used to being, uh, you're being paid based on selling hardware. You know, how do you move those people to a, to a model, to a notion, to a paradigm where they're not about selling hardware, that where they're about selling services? How do you incent them so that they don't, you know, so, it's like kids so, on so, crack. So Ben, I, you know, I don't totally disagree with you, but I mean, you look at the Enterprise Services Group, I mean, the old EDS guys, they've known how to put together solutions for a long time. Uh, you know, hardware is a component of that, but you know, I, I think, you know, don't you think HP has you I, know pretty solid services? I, I, I think yeah, but there needs to be a huge amount. It, it does for sure, but there needs to be a, a huge amount of culture change, and you need to incent people to not necessarily sell hardware when they can sell a, a, a package solution that, that that does the job. And and you know that comes down to compensation, and it, and it's ensuring that your compensation is 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 targeted and mirrors the, the strategy of the organisation. Yeah. yeah. So I think so you're I, right. I was wondering. So what do you think of HP's cloud announcements this week and, and, and HP's cloud strategy? They've got a, a lot of different pieces. Uh, we said it's a little hard to squint through all the different options. What, what what's your take on so HP cloud? I mean, I, you know, the, the converged cloud story. Without you know, there's there's dogma on both sides: public cloud, private cloud. But the converged cloud story is a, is a really realistic reaction to the reality for enterprise, which is that they're going to want some stuff public, they're going to want stu some stuff private, and they want some consistency between the two. So regardless of whether that's going to happen on OpenStack or CloudStack or one of the other, you know, um, you know or, the, or, the, or the Amazon API, regardless of which hardware vendor is going to supply that, some sort of convergence between public and private, private, allowing it to be hybridized, allowing it, you know, what you're talking about with Windows 8, the same system across multiple devices. That's the future because we're not going to be tied to one device, we're not going to be tied to one location, we're not going to be tied to infrastructure based in, in, in one sort of notion. It needs to be across everything. Okay, I so think one of the question marks though is Windows 8 itself though. And it's such a radical different new UI with Metro okay. that it's going to be difficult. I think that's going to be a difficult transition. So, so you know, Ben, uh, when I look at the, the some of the gap between public and private, one of the challenges I see there is, you know, private environments. I've got all my legacy applications in public. You know, I want to do new applications, and that transition is, is not a simple one. You know, so so I mean, you know, I, I always come back to to a discussion I had with Christian Riley. Um, Fellow, fellow Clouderati and, and uh, once upon a time the president of the private cloud. Um, and you know, his perspective is that for, you know, he, he works for, for Bechtel and for his organization there's literally thousands of, of legacy applications that are never going to move. You know, the reality is they work just fine, the costs of re-engineering, re-architecting those to go into cloud, it's never going to happen. So, so a lot of, in a lot of ways, you know, the cloud is for greenfield stuff, it's for particular point solutions. Over time and over the long, we're talking a long time. Legacy apps will, will fall off as they as they go into disuse, and more and more will go to the to the cloud. But the reality is, is that there's still mission critical stuff running on mainframes, and there will be for the foreseeable future. Yeah. And so there'll be new mainframes as yeah. IBM is showing. So, so Ben, they're giving me the two minute warning. I want to talk about education as the last topic here. If we talk about the, these changes and customers need to kind of get out of their silos and you know adopting cloud and new models and automation, it, it's it's the people. Uh, and you're heavily involved in the education, so you know what is the cloud education uh, scene like these days? Sure. So I, I mean, I've um, been part of creating something called Cloud U, uh, which is a, a, a free vendor agnostic uh, cloud education series. And the rationale for that is that you've got all these business people and you've got the traditional IT folks that really don't know what the cloud is, don't know the questions to ask. You know, not not from a technical perspective, perspective, but just just the basics. What is the cloud? You know, what do you need to think about? Tips and tricks, those sorts of things. Uh, and you know, cloud is a brave new frontier, and in any brave new frontier, there's there's also there's always a lack of, of, of education. So, I'm passionate about writing that 
So uh, I believe HP has some cloud education programs. Uh, I, I got a new book on cloud uh, from uh, the, the CTO of cloud uh, here at HP. And EMC has a uh, cloud architect certification uh, class that they do. What, what's your take on the, some of the vendor yeah, solutions? Yeah, so I mean, yeah, it's great. I think um, there's absolutely a place for vendor stuff. And uh, you know, both, Alex means and I, jobs. both Alex and I were quoted in that book that you were given. Um, yeah, that, that's a great thing. There's a need for vendor stuff. There's a need for vendor neutral stuff. Yeah, it's all so, good. so, so what what is the what's the hot job of the future? If, if people want to uh, look yeah, at I the cloud, I think there's a lot of hot jobs. I think um, data scientists are going to be hugely in demand. I think the whole the whole DevOps question, moving from systems administration to really understanding applications and, and strategies, and, and much more strategically business focused IT professionals. Jobs mm -hmm. that are in the business of data. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, exciting time for kind of a next generation of jobs in, in IT and infrastructure. Uh, you know, Ben, I hope you get to enjoy the weather here in, in Vegas a little more. You told me it's snowing back home? It's snowing at home. Uh, it's it's not possible. <laughs> it's true. Uh, it, 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 it must be like some other side of the world that I'm not familiar with. It is. Absolutely, completely. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, can I take that airplane on your shirt is when I want to go to New Zealand? Uh, is you that can actually. In the future, you can pull it out, model it, you know, with your first hands. Ever, first ever jump in it and fly away. New Zealand. That, that is very data cool. Man. So, so Ben, uh, appreciate you coming on theCUBE here. It's always great to have the conversations online. Uh, ben Keeps on Twitter. Uh, the, the Cloud U stuff, is uh, is that on the Rackspace.com site? Yeah, so just, just search for Cloud U. Find it there, and your own blog? Yeah, it's uh, www.diversity.net.nz. Excellent, thank you so much for joining us, and Alex, always appreciate your uh, support here on the, the cloud and, and everything else. So, uh, this is Stu Miniman with Wikibon. Uh, and uh, we'll be back right after this break.